Hey everyone, welcome to another Angry Artist Podcast. Now, I talked about a lot of the business side of things and the fundamentals and how they're important, but I haven't really got into the fundamentals, except maybe for one or two videos. Now, this will start happening a bit more often as this channel was for me to ramble on everything art related, including the technical side of art. This time, I will talk about boxes. When you are a kid, or if you are a kid, you were probably taught to use circles and ovals to draw heads and all of that stuff. Now, while it is useful to know and understand how rounded shapes work, I want to make a case that will probably change the way you see the world. The idea of seeing the world as boxes or cubes. So why is it important to understand? Circles are ambiguous in their nature. They have infinite edges. They're curved and there's no real, real perspective going on. A sphere and a circle will have the same silhouette. This is a problem because when we're trying to draw something in three-dimensional space, a sphere can be rotated in how many ways you want it rotated and it will still have the same silhouette. But a cube or a rectangular prism, or otherwise a box of course, if you rotate it, you are able to see where it's facing. That is the basis of perspective. Now I'm sure if you've been taught how to draw perspective, you would have learned about vanishing points and conversion lines and stuff. Notice that all the lines are straight and it goes to a point. Because obviously if something has to vanish into space in perspective, they would probably be something like a box. Now, if you cannot distinguish that, then the piece that you're trying to create will not look three-dimensional. This is the case when you use circles and when you build your artwork based off of circular objects. Everything in life can be dissected into boxes. Even circular objects. If you were taught how to draw in perspective, you might have also learned that if you have the right lines, you can establish rounded shapes in perspective. If you understand that, if you know that idea and drill it in your head, you can observe reality in boxes. If you are able to encompass every single thing you observe into boxes, then your artwork will look realistically in perspective. Now, the whole how to draw anime or how to draw cartoon tutorials where they get you to draw a circle and then you start drawing details, there is a bit of merit to that. But let's switch it into boxes. Imagine if your first step in any artwork is to draw the box encompassing your object first. The question becomes, how do you dissect an object in the simplest geometric shapes, in the simplest boxes? Now something like a book is going to be more obvious than organic objects. But hear me out. Our heads might look rounded, our skulls are pretty rounded in shape, but we do have very distinct ways that cut into front, side, and back views, as with top and bottom and such. It is very important when you're drawing, for example, a head, 
that you have hints that will show that, hey, the head is going in perspective. A huge mistake that a lot of people make are to make their heads too rounded in form, where it starts looking a little bit out of three-dimensionality. Now, a sphere obviously can be three-dimensional, but as I said before, a circle and a sphere have the same shape, no matter how you rotate it. The only difference is the shading. While in reality, everything is technically lit and shaded, obviously, in cartooning in certain styles, you might not always have shading. And what happens is you have to use lines in order to create that three-dimensionality. And when you do that without shading, that means circles and spheres are completely indistinguishable. This is where lines to create boxes come in. You want your lines to read as if it's going to have different faces. Shading is always the icing on the cake. Your drawing has to be working three-dimensionally before your shading can make it better. While shading can hide mistakes, if you can capture the boxes within your artwork, you will be able to augment and improve what you have with shading. It's never the other way around. So I advise you to draw a lot of boxes. If there's one exercise that I want to recommend to people before they start drawing other more advanced subjects, you want to get a cardboard box or something that's cubic in nature and try to draw it. You'll find that a lot of beginners will round off things more than they should when it actually is more cubic in nature. And again, when you can see those lines making a box, when you see that box encompassing your character or your environment or an object, you are able to draw it. You have to understand that every single thing in this world has faces. Even if something doesn't have eyes, they're always looking into a certain direction. That's what I'm talking about. So for example, your face, your front of your face encompasses the eyes, the nose and the mouth, but the side will have the ears and the rest of it. Even though your head might round off at the top and at the back, there is still distinguishable sides. Now that's not to say everyone's faces are boxes. Um, look up Brock Lesnar if you want to see a really square face. Not all of us have square faces. So you have to create hints towards a cubic form. Again, if you want to look into a huge mistake a lot of people do is when they're drawing females. Now females tend to have more rounded faces. But when they round off too much, it becomes a case of looking like it's not in space and in perspective. Where your head is facing, where you establish the box is facing, will create that form of three-dimensionality, no matter how well you shade it. So I implore you to understand the idea of boxes. Look up Andrew Loomis. Andrew Loomis is an artist and illustrator in the past who made books on how to draw cubic forms and incorporating that into character use. So if you're looking into cartoons and anime styles, look very carefully at every line they put down. Barring the really poorly drawn ones, you'll notice every line has a purpose into creation of three-dimensionality. A lot of things in anime are deceptively rounded, 
but in actuality, it's masterful. Look into really well done anime such as Little Witch Academia, which has fantastic drawings, and you'll notice again, even the most rounded characters will have boxes that can encompass them. Anyways, I hope that makes sense. I'll be talking more about three dimensionality in the future. But if you found this helpful, feel free to comment and subscribe. Anyways, thank you for listening and I'll see you next time.